after nearly a month now without doing a YouTube video, and and I know my last video that I did, I did say I was going to try to do more videos, but it's, it it just hasn't 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 transpired, guys. Uh, so I do apologise for that. Um, but I thought I'd do a a fairly quickish video, although I don't actually know how long this video will 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 run for. But we'll see when we do the editing. But um, it's in respect to the PlayStation 4, and there's bound to be a big drone amongst a lot of you uh, guys, because th uh, that's current gen, but um, yeah. It's to do with uh, with actually upgrading the hard drive uh, on the PlayStation 4. I know there's loads and loads of videos on this on, on YouTube. I haven't done it yet on my PlayStation 4. I am about to do it, so I just thought I'd, I'd give you bit of background to the process I'll show you the process I'll show you the hard drive that I'm using and and hopefully show you how easy the process is I'm sure many of you are aware that that, uh, that certainly with the launch PlayStation 4s uh, they came with I suppose really quite a paltry um, a 500 gigabyte hard drive and I suppose whilst that sounds quite a lot it actually isn't that much you know when you're looking at the games that you uh, have to install even the ones from discs because every single game has to be installed on to the PlayStation 4 uh, much in the same way as the Xbox one so you can no longer just run a game from a disc you have to install it and on average the sort of game installs are, are around about 30 gigabytes which is a hell of a lot of space so if you think that the hard drive itself is about 500 gig uh, once you take off the amount uh, that the PlayStation 4 requires for the OS and other other things that it needs to use space for you're probably left with I think it's just over 400 gig ish um, so uh, depending on how many games you get and also if you are a member of PlayStation Plus and you download the monthly games that they give you uh, you can quickly uh, sort of eat up all your uh, available disk space now of course you can manage your games in respect that you can uh, uninstall games and and it keeps them in in an area of the library but then you but then you've got to reinstall them if you want to play them again so 500 gigabytes nowadays isn't a fat lot of of data availability for a console in reality um, and now you can buy playstations now are starting to come out uh, special editions really but i'm not sure if you can buy a one terabyte one that's not a special edition but you can buy a one terabyte uh, playstation 4 uh, which obviously doubles up the available space uh, the actual process of upgrading the hard drive is something that is actually supported by PlayStation 4. Uh, some people say they actually encourage you to do it, they give you instructions on how to do it, and there's facilities um, uh, that are documented uh, to support that process, and that's what I'm going to go through now. Now, uh, there are various drives that you can buy, and it, it, it's... I've done a little bit of research on the drives, but in reality, I wanted the, uh, for me, I wanted the biggest bang for my buck, uh, in effect. I didn't want to go stupid and and buy a drive that was that was pretty expensive. I wanted to get, and uh, not necessarily the cheapest, but I wanted to get a good, a good bang for a buck. So I actually went out today. Uh, I did a bit of research over the weekend uh, to try and, and find uh, appropriate drives that you can use, did a bit of price checking to see how much the drives are and strangely enough and I was quite flabbergasted that I actually had a quick look on Argos to that, I don't know why I was looking at Argos, I had a quick look on Argos um, and, and one of the drives that they sell is one of the ones that I was looking at and and they've got a special offer at the moment it's $59.95 and it's a two terabyte two and a half inch drive and that's it there and it's called it's called a Seagate expansion uh, two terabyte and the model number I'll actually put this down in the description uh, the model number is STEA uh, 
uh, like I said, I'll put that down in the description. It's £59.99 at the moment uh, from Argos. It's the cheapest I could get it for, um, uh, for anywhere online. Uh, the beauty about Argos, you can actually reserve it online and go straight to the store to pick it up. And I actually did that this morning. I reserved it online and then went in uh, over my lunch break to go and pick it up. So it's actually more convenient for me than, uh, than actually ordering online via uh, one of the cheaper sort of PC uh, component resellers. So for $59.95 for a two terabyte drive, that is, that's pretty good value for money to be honest. So what I'm gonna do is I am uh, gonna take the existing drive out of my PlayStation 4, which is the 500 gigabyte drive. I'm gonna insert this one into it, uh, put it into the cradle that's in the PlayStation 4. I'm gonna download a bit of software off the PlayStation website that enables me to effectively um, set that hard drive up for use and I'll guide you through the process I'll show you the process I probably won't go for the whole lot but I'll I'll show you the process I'll put a link in the comments to this video of any appropriate bit of information that I'm finding any any files I'm downloading uh, or whatever um, uh, to provide you the information but it is an extremely straightforward process I've previously done this for the PlayStation 3 uh, again that was very very straightforward and I've actually done a similar process but in a slightly different way for the Xbox One. I was getting the same problem on that. I was starting to hit the hit the hit the limit of the internal drive, which again is 500 gigabyte. But the good thing about the Xbox One is that you can uh, just hook up an external drive straight to the Xbox One and it will recognize it and it will use it for games. As long as it's a USB 3 drive and it is over 256 um, i think it's got to be greater than 256 gigabytes i could be wrong is it 256 no no it can't be 256 megabytes i mean that is nothing it must be 256 gigabytes uh, so it's got to be uh, greater than a, uh, than a quarter of a uh, terabyte I've actually hooked up a two terabyte external drive to my Xbox One uh, via USB so I've now got the internal drive which is half a gig half a terabyte sorry and the two terabyte drive external so that's two and a half terabytes now that's giving me loads and loads of space so it's a bit easier on the Xbox One but um, uh, but you can at least have a, have a similar functionality as regards to being able to add to your hard disk space if you've got a PlayStation 4 and it is very very straightforward so I'll cut the ball and I'll go straight to me ripping my PlayStation 4 apart okay it's not that bad guys it really isn't and it, and this won't affect your warranty and it's the cheapest way I think of getting extra space on your PlayStation 4 right first things first we need to take the hard drive out of the caddy now this is purely because uh, the type of hard drive that I've bought here is a proper external hard drive, a USB 3 hard drive. Uh, so it comes in a caddy. Now you can buy these drives uh, actually without the caddy, uh, so just the drive itself. But strangely enough, and this is really weird, that the, that the internal drives are actually dearer than the external ones. Work that one out. You actually get more with an, uh, with an external drive because you've got the caddy there. But they're really easy to take apart, so don't worry about that. And obviously, it's cheaper anyway. So um, now, what I'm not going to do is actually destroy this caddy. I want to be quite careful with taking this caddy apart because what I'm actually going to do is the hard drive I take out of my PlayStation 4, the 500 gigabyte hard drive. I'm actually going to put back into this caddy so I can use it for uh, for other things, effectively. So you get two for the price of one in this deal. Now, I haven't actually took this type of caddy. Oh. That's me saying it's easy to get apart. It looks like it's moulded plastic. That's a bit of a bummer. Oh, bugger. Right, well, it must be able to be taken apart. Now, down the actual... Okay, I'm going to try this first. I want to take my glasses off here. I can't. You get a bit older, you can't actually focus. So let's. Hmm. 
Right, okay. Now, that did throw me for a, a short while. Um, now, after a bit of a bit of a logical thought process and a big hammer, I've managed to tease the part off. Basically, on the and I've. I have damaged it slightly, uh, only the case, not the hard drive itself. But there's a little lip on this drive. I don't know if you're going to pick that up. You probably see the damage on it. But there is a little. S losing a bit of light there. Come on, come on, come on. That's better. Right, on the front, down the bottom corner, uh, well, actually the top corner, there's a little slot there. I'm not actually sure what that slot is. Perhaps it's to help it breathe. I don't know. But basically, I've just got a little flathead screwdriver like that and just and just uh, try to tease it up a bit you can actually see some stretch mark some stretch marks some stress marks in the plastic there now i didn't lift it too much but what it's doing is actually brought the corner up and you can see there basically got these pop tabs so in theory if i just ease the ease the screw there you go it's coming out now and it shouldn't do that much damage hopefully well, at least to the case, it won't damage the hard drive. Obviously, you've got to be, you've got to be, be a little bit careful. Oh, there we go, it's coming out now. There we go. So, hopefully... There you go. Whee! It's coming up now. Oh, yeah. Whee. there we go so that's oh, that's come off and none of the a uh, couple of tabs have been slightly stretched but nothing nothing really bad that will go back in it actually looks like is that a ah right okay yeah so that was actually a light so that was to show you a, a light would come through so um i expect if you've got a if you've got a blade in there a real thin um a sort of scalpel blade uh, then you possibly be able to tease that out, but I'm not sure because the uh, the locating points in there are pretty tight in there, so you need to give it a bit of leverage to actually get that uh, popped off. But if we just look on there now, that was the corner that you had the little window or that little slit, and that's actually a light. But that's got nothing to do with the hard drive itself. That's actually part of the controller. The um, it's actually a a SATA. Uh, plug on the end uh, or socket on the end. It's not going to focus, is it? Is it gonna... No, it's not going to focus. My hands are too big. But basically, that's SATA, uh, and you plug a USB uh, cable into that that comes with a pack. So now this should just just poke out, poke out, pull out, which it has done. So that's the. That's the bottom, that's the top, so we'll put that to one side for the moment and we'll reuse that later and I'll show you uh, what we're going to do with it. So that's your drive, and like I said, it's a two and a half inch drive, uh, so it's really thin. And there are actually Samsung drives in these in these units, which are, um, are the preferred drive type for the PlayStation 4, or one of the preferred uh, drive types. And the actual drive itself is an ST2000 LM003. So that's actually the drive you really want. So it's the best way you can get that drive basically. And this is one of the best ways of getting that drive, certainly for the money. Now you'll see on the drive itself, it's got like this silver backing. And it's got a bit of the backing on there. Basically underneath that is the actual, um, uh, is the uh, is a USB uh, connector. So what we need to do is just carefully peel that silver up like that and underneath it you'll see the actual uh, connector type there and that just unplugs basically so just be careful and you can tease it out and that's coming out nice and easily he says it will come out Sorry, it's one of the feet that came off. We need that. Yeah, what you need to do is take these feet off the side, which are actually covering the screws, but they're actually used to damp the drive unit within the case. So if 
okay obviously if you drop it I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend you drop an external driver it will damp it within the case with these little rubber bungs here you can see those there and they're just covering the screws so we need to take all that off and the one that I've just dropped on my lap which we will either find now no we're not going to find it now we'll have to find that in a bit but we'll come back to that so so if I pull that that protection off and it's just lightly lightly stuck on and again we'll just leave that there and we'll come back to that and we need to now just tease this this connector off and there's nothing locking it in by the looks of it and there shouldn't be anything locking it in or is there is that a lock let's just use a little screwdriver just to help it on its way that's it Yeah, it was just tight, nothing wrong with that at all, just tight. And see, I'm starting to pull that away from that edge connector, which is basically what you would uh, connect inside a, a PC. And that comes out there. So that's uh, that's taken that off. And again, like I said, we'll reuse that on the on the 500 gig hard drive out of the PlayStation 4 that we'll end up putting back into the <laughs> Right, whatever you do, don't drop a hard drive like that. What a prat. Anyway, sorry, excuse <laughs> I always like to make sure there's a bit of action on my videos, you know. So that is the drive, all ready now to actually pop in into the PlayStation 4. So let's have a look at that next. Now, one thing you need to consider is that when you want to swap out your hard drive, anything you've got installed on your hard drive in respect of of game data so anything you've downloaded for updates around games that you've got installed all the games that are installed themselves you can't back those up which is a bit of a pain in the backside because it means that you've got to uh, reinstall all your game library again and also perform any updates of those games any games that you've uh, that you've downloaded off the PlayStation Store, you've got to reinstall those. So it is quite possible that your internet connection is going to get an absolute beating, assuming you put all the games back on to your hard drive. And you probably won't end up doing that initially. You'd only put the games back on that you actually know that you're going to be playing next. But obviously, as, uh, as time goes on, you're not going to bump into the same problems you're going to get with a smaller drive. You've got a lot more uh, drive space to play with. But it does mean that you've got to reinstall games and apps and so forth. Now, uh, depending on how you set your PlayStation 4 up, and also whether or not you've got PlayStation Plus, is that your game saves can be saved in the cloud if you're a PlayStation Plus member. Now, I have PlayStation Plus, but I haven't saved my game saves in the cloud. They're all local. And the reason I've done that is just in case I can't get online for whatever reason. So I can always I can always play the game and, and save my game. Um, I'm sure there's ways around that. that it, it, it works intelligently in the system to work all that stuff out for you, but I've never set the cloud game saves on. I've always had them saved locally. Now that is one area that you can save to a USB device if you want to as part of this process or you can actually throw all your game saves up to the cloud. Well I'm just going to do as is so I'm effectively going to copy over uh, onto a USB stick from a PlayStation 4 all of my game saves. Now it's a bit of a pain in the backside to do because it takes some time to do because you have to do it on a game by game basis but it won't take a massive amount of time but it is it is a slight ball ache in that way. So to do that, what we need to do is uh, go to settings and we need to go to application saved data management. And what we want to do is look at the saved data in the system storage, uh, which is the inbuilt uh, drive that's in there at the moment. And we want to copy to USB storage device. And like I said, it, at this point you could say that okay I've got PlayStation Plus and I want to upload everything now to online storage but I'm just going to do an as is uh, crossover so I'll choose copy to USB storage device I've inserted a normal USB memory stick 
into uh, one of the USB ports on the PlayStation 4 and I've made sure I've got enough space on there to cope with all the junk, sorry not junk, progress that I'm going to put onto, uh, onto the memory stick and there's not a massive amount there but it will take me some time to go through each one of those but basically you just choose one so let's just take the first one and we'll click on enter and it will say to you right what do you want to do do you want to select all or whatever so we'll go and select all and then move that to copy and it will copy that on to the usb device now obviously when we come to actually move it back we'll do exactly the same process uh, but the opposite of this so we'll take it from the usb device back to playstation 4 once i've got the new hard drive in there so basically I've just got to go through every single one there. So drive club, select all, copy, and again it will pass it all over. So I'll get uh, through that, it doesn't take very long, I mean this one here is like 350 meg which is a pretty big amount of game save information but it's not taking long to do. So I'll, um, I'll zip through this and then I'll join you for the next part. Right, so now that we've uh, backed up what we need to back up from the uh, PlayStation 4 onto a USB memory stick, we're now going to look at actually actually stripping the PlayStation 4 down. Um, it's nowhere near as bad as what I'm sort of making it out when I'm using language like stripping it down. It's not, uh, guys, it's really easy. Uh, basically, PlayStation 4 is split into uh, two areas. At uh, the top area of the PlayStation 4 uh, logo on it is the bit that we're going to actually remove and there's no screws involved in this at all. Uh, all you need to do is get the PlayStation 4 on a nice level surface like this table for instance and you just need to gently push this plastic portion out to that side. It will effectively just unclip so we'll do that now. You have to put a little bit of pressure on it like that sorry it's best to do it actually with your palm of your hand and actually move it back so if i just slot it back in so if you get your hand there and just and sort of gently push down but move across and it'll unclip which it just has done there and that should just slide out which is done so that's that that bit of plastic off so we'll put that to one side and now we have the well, part of the PlayStation 4 open. Now, the actual uh, hard drive is underneath this area here. You can actually uh, see, you're not going to have to pick it up uh, very well on the camera, but there is a uh, one screw that you need to remove to get this caddy out of the, out of the system. And it has a Phillips head on it, and it's a big screw, you can't miss it. You're probably not going to, let's just see if you can pick that up on the camera. I'll move it, no, it's not going to. Oh, yes it will. Right, the top of that picture, just there, that's the screw that we need to take out. So we'll put that down there. So we use a Phillips screwdriver. And that will come out. So we just gently unscrew it. And it should now just slide out. Which it just give it a slight little wiggle. And it will just pull out, just like that. Just like that. So that's the, uh, that's the unit there. So that's the standard drive. The standard drive that's in it is... No, it doesn't actually say what it is. So I don't know who makes this. Advanced format. Mm. HGST. I haven't got a clue. HGST. Is the manufacturer by the looks of it. I've never heard of them. I suspect it's the cheapest piece of shit they could get in the PlayStation 4 to keep the price down. Oh, someone else I forgot to mention as well is that uh, people are stating that once you put this Samsung uh, drive uh, into the PlayStation 4, it makes the PlayStation 4 slightly quicker on loading games and, and also helps uh, with texture popping as it's streaming textures from the hard drive because it is slightly quicker, which is obviously another bonus. Right, so all we need to do is actually remove this out of the caddy. And if you look at the sides of the caddy, you can see uh, four screws. One, two, three, and four. So those, those two there, and those two there, 
are what we need to take out. So we'll pull those out. And then what we'll obviously do is we will push the new drive in. Uh, we'll screw it back in with those screws uh, that we're just removing now. And it should all be ready to slot back in. I mean, it is, it is literally that easy from the hardware perspective. Uh, we've got another couple of steps to uh, go through on the PlayStation 4 itself, but we'll, uh, we'll go on to that in a second. But I'll put that to one side. Uh, now the hard drive that we uh, that we took out the caddy, so the new hard drive, actually had some uh, screws in there already, uh, which are the same sort of mounting screws. Well, at least the holes are going to be the holes we're going to use for um, uh, for these black screws that we took out of the PlayStation 4 caddy. So we'll take these ones out. And we need to put these to one side because we still need to use these when we look to reuse the uh, the 500 gig drive that we've just taken out of the PlayStation 4. Because remember I said I wanted to put that back inside the caddy so I can reuse it for someone else. And we will uh, go through that quickly uh, once we've done the PlayStation 4 bit. pretty good when you actually buy something and you can actually reuse what you've taken out of the PlayStation 4 and because it's 500 gig it's not an unsurmountable size of space and because they're so small uh, the caddies they come in pretty useful actually so uh, what we've got to remember is obviously put this in the right way so it's the connector pointing out the uh, out the top of the caddy and uh, the caddy will go in like that so theoretically these will line up, which they are. So we'll put the original screws back in again. We'll screw those up tightly once it's more or less there. Last one. Oh. There you go, all done. So that's the new drive back in the existing PlayStation 4 caddy. Uh, connectors at the top there. So what we'll do is pull the PlayStation 4 over and it should uh, self locate itself. And you just give it a bit of a gentle push at the end and you could feel that actually go into the uh, into the connector on the PlayStation 4 so we stick the uh, the original uh, caddy screw back in nearly done and then we'll fit the cover back on so we we'll just line it back up make sure it's straight and then push it job done that's it it is as simple as that as regards to the hardware install. And as you could see, the way that it came apart um, certainly does allude to the fact that, that uh, the PlayStation have, have, have made this so easy uh, to be able to do this. And it's something that they actually support, which is quite um, uh, nice for a manufacturer, certainly as regards to actually fitting an internal drive uh, into a unit. So that's all. Uh, that's all ready to go so i'll connect that back up to my monitor and then i'll show you the next step which is a file we need to download so this is the web page on the playstation.com website that you need to go to to actually download this this new system software i'll provide you the link uh, to this specific page it is a, a official playstation page uh, but i'll provide you a specific link to this page um, and now what you need to be careful of is don't click on this first link here which is all about uh, just a 2.57 or the latest version of the software update that's available uh, that's only to be used if you've already got your system up and running uh, but what we'll do in, 
here is I'm actually doing a fresh install and there is a note about that. Let's just clear that message out so I've downloaded it. Uh, there is a note about that here. Uh, basically saying that if you want to perform a fresh install then click here it takes you a different part of the page and this is all about doing a new installation and actually one of the reasons why you would want to do one and it mentions that is if you're replacing the hard drive so don't click on that on that first link and it's actually up the top of the page you can scan all the way up there so don't use that one because it will not work you won't be able to get the PlayStation 4 up and running so let's just click on that and it will guide you through the process here of what to do uh, where you've got to put the file and basically on your on your usb stick you've got to ensure that in the root of that usb stick is a folder called uh, ps4 and within that is a folder called update it's within the update folder that you have to place this file uh, that you need to download and the link to uh, where you need to download is is here it says uh, click to start download uh, which is that there and the file is quite large it is about 804 meg well it's about yeah about 800 meg so it's just it's a bit under a gig so it's a fairly big file um you know it's obviously dependent upon your upon your internet connection So what we need to do is copy that over. I actually have to rename that. Take that one out. It just needs to be ps4 update.pup. So it won't work. So we'll copy that over to my USB drive. And I'm actually using the same USB drive that I've got my save game data on. So if we look at the root of F, uh, we've got PS4, which is what you need. And within that you need the update folder i've actually got another folder called save data because this is the memory stick that i'm using or i've used to copy over my uh, game saves so we'll go into update and we'll plonk it in there and that'll probably take okay just under a minute and then basically what we need to do is after we've done that we'll plug the usb drive into the playstation 4 and we will do a safe mode boot which we just keep the power button even though they don't actually have power buttons do they but we'll keep our finger over the power button for about seven seconds it will boot into safe mode and and i think we go for a short process there where we have to tell it right this is the usb stick and it will start loading it may even detect it anyway but but we'll find out in a minute We've got 10 seconds to go for it to copy five seconds should be there in a minute or even a second there we go so let's eject ejecto that let's swap over some playstation 4 input fingers crossed we should be up and running, so let's keep that there. That's safe mode by the second beep, I think. dual shock yeah so it's coming up with safe mode as you can see um and my dual shock is connected via usb i just need to switch it on there we go and we need to initialize playstation 4 reinstall system software so it's saying uh, make sure usb device is connected which it is and it's version 2.57 or later, which it is. So we're going to OK, and hopefully that will start to do its magic. I'll just make sure that starts, and then I'll I'll cut the video, and I'll show you it up and running, and we'll go through the process of tidying things up. 
he says optimistically while it says please wait hopefully this won't be a mega long wait until we actually see it doing something to prove that it does work I don't for me to say oh yeah do this and do oh here we go PlayStation 4 will be initialized all users and all data will be deleted are you sure you want to continue now obviously make sure you got your PlayStation Plus account information somewhere so when you have to set that back up on your new system you're not going oh no I forgot what my password is and so forth they will say yes shit this is it now do or die guys do or die let's live dangerously so that is actually fairly quick to be honest 15% already but I'll stop the video here and once it's all fired back up uh, obviously I'll tell you if I've had any problems once I fire it back up but hopefully not and we will go through the sort of closing stages so as you can see we have the PlayStation um, well what do they call it the the um, uh, for want of a better word desktop I know it's not called desktop is it? it's called something else but but everything's all up and running so this is the new hard driving um, I've actually uh, signed in and set up um, uh, with my uh, uh, with my previous PlayStation uh, Plus account uh, profile etc. And it is now virtually in a in a sort of fit state now to actually start reinstalling the games. As I'm sure you guys are aware, but I'll just quickly go through this. If you look at your library uh, when you sign in with your profile. It will show all the games that you have, have previously downloaded um, and now obviously I've got to re-download these or install them from the uh, from the game discs uh, that I've got but that, that's okay it's gonna be a bit of a ball ache admittedly but I will start to do that now over the coming sort of days um, to start filling up my new hard drive but if we actually go to settings uh, just so uh, I can show you how much uh, space I've got left now so if we go to system storage management and it will say in there at the top you can see it says 1.77 terabytes so it's it's recognizing uh, the two terabyte drive I've got in which is obviously uh, the process that we've just gone through now the only thing that, uh, that you need to do apart from obviously reinstall or download uh, games uh, or any other um, uh, sort of media content uh, like that is to load back in uh, the game saves so again I'll just quickly just show you that in respect to the process you go to or through so we go to application save data management so it's a, it, it's a reverse of what we did before so what we need to do is uh, go to save data on USB storage device and copy to storage. Now again, I'm right. Well, let's see what this does. Do you have to do it? Yeah, you do. I want a ball like that. So you have to do exactly the same as what I did before. You've got to go through and do each one. But it is a pretty quick process, to be honest. It only took me, I don't know, five, ten minutes perhaps to do it from the system to the USB stick so it will take the same sort of time here to go backwards again so again you choose the one that you want off your USB stick uh, you say select all and copy and it will copy it back and you just keep going around inside that loop Oh. oh god that's a bit of a ball lake isn't it right so it won't let you actually install the game saves unless you've got the game installed not install sorry copy over I can't imagine that that is for everything because it did the first one didn't it ah because I've got the disc in of course the disc is in uh, Last of Us Remastered it has installed the game so it will let you uh, copy the game save over I suspect that is because it must overwrite 
uh, the game save that is part of the install process I imagine so of course if you put the game save on first and then install the game it would overwrite it with a blank uh, game save that sounds sort of logical let's just see if it does it uh, with Resogun which is a download game so this isn't an install physical version it's a download game I imagine it's exactly the same yeah exactly the same right so I've got to go through and actually install all the games first or download them before putting the game saves on okay a uh, bit of a uh, well, slightly more of a pain in the backside, but but it is what it is. So anyway, guys, it has worked. The PlayStation's up and running. You've seen the space that's available, and obviously, just, you know, there's a few things you've got to go through to actually finish off the setup to get you back to where you were before, uh, before you rip the hard drive out. But I'll end this bit here now because you've seen all that working, and and the next bit, which will be the last bit of the video, I will show you putting the old PlayStation 4 USB sorry uh, the old place <laughs> the old uh, playstation 4 hard drive back into the caddy to give me a usb uh, hard drive back uh, albeit with less space than the one i bought obviously but at least you can reuse that but we'll just go through that process just quickly now to show you how that works and and that'll be done right hopefully i won't drop this hard drive like i dropped the the um uh, the new one for the PlayStation 4. But uh, just to recap really, so this is the original PlayStation 4 hard drive, 500 gig, and of course I don't just want to throw this away, I wouldn't mind actually using it. So what we're gonna do is insert it back into the cradle from the new hard drive. So as I said before, um, uh, we're sort of getting two for the price of one here, which is quite nice. So first thing we want to do is put the original screws back in, which were the screws that came out of uh, of the new hard drive. Uh, very similar process really to what we've done uh, with the PlayStation 4 uh, replacement drive that had location screws as well. Because these PlayStation 4s are noisy, I've still got it switched on and the fan on it in fact, that's probably not the fan. That sounds like it's the drive, the the um, uh, the Blu-ray drive, because it's got a disc in there. Sorry, that's irritating me. So I'm gonna have to pull that disc out. There you go. That's quieted it down a bit. So we'll stick these screws back in. And again, the reason we've got to put these back in is because we need to put the rubber. Um, mounts on the side of these screws so when it goes back into the case again it gives it some form of damping to um, stop any or to resist some elements of, of, of vibration or movement right so that's the four screws put back in so those two there and those two there and again these are the little rubber stoppers that go on the screw heads actually I probably should have put those on after I put the uh, guard on it but that's right so we uh, so we need to put the the uh, the USB 3 uh, controller uh, back onto the SATA interface so again just make sure that's the right way around it'll only it'll only go on one way so you can't knacker it up by put well I suppose you could knacker it up if you forced it in the wrong way but that's the controller back on now so that's the SATA controller the USB 3 controller so we need to put the protective anti static interference debris on it and if I remember correctly that bit went on the base of the card there's actually a oh, screwdriver there's actually a little flat there that should go down like that. 
So that goes over the over the locating hole. Oh, try and get this on the camera. So that goes over the locating connector or hole. And because it's a double-sided sort of tape that's on it. Oh, and it shows you the light as well because that's actually got a light on it. Same as everything else. And there's a slight bit of stickiness around the side. So again, I mean, it, it's, it's not going to go anywhere, but you can flatten it all back down. I mean, little rubber doobrys are coming off. So let's put that back on there. So we've got a drive now with the, uh, the protection sheet on there. And, and uh, also uh, the USB 3 uh, controller on there. So we need to insert it back into the little case. Again looking at this, got to make sure that the LED which is there is pointing up because that's the back of the, sorry, that's the back of the case. Again it'll only go in one way so it, it's not, it's not difficult to work it out. Now, interesting, yeah, okay, so, just have to get a slight, ah, yeah, well, that didn't go very well, it's all right. You say you're getting old, but you have to take your glasses off to look at things that are close up, Fucking Mr. Magoo here, right. So you just gently, gently push it in, and that's that's home. You see the see the connector there, all lined up, fine. Put my glasses back on. So we now need to put top cover on, and again that should just push in. Uh, it will certainly go on better than what it did coming out. I'm sure of it, and it will just lock back into place. And there you go. Jobs are good and as I say. Okay, if, apart from the slight blemish that you saw originally on the uh, on the case, if I'd been a bit more careful and slightly less heavy heavy handed, you uh, you wouldn't have seen that. But it's um, yeah, it's all back together again. That is hopefully giving you guys a bit of a step by step guide on how to update your PlayStation 4 hard drive, the internal hard drive. It is very 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 straightforward on a on a sliding scale of one to ten. I'd say it was a a minus four difficulty it's that easy it really really is easy it won't void your warranty uh, as long as you follow the types of steps that i've gone through um hope you enjoyed the video guys and i'll speak to you again soon